I can predict that you're gonna break your tractor. Here's five reasons, at least five reasons why I think that you'll break your tractor, especially if you don't follow the advice in this video. I'm telling you, I've seen it in so many instances. I've been guilty of it as a new tractor owner. And even as you get long in the tooth on owning the tractor, you get complacent and some of these things will come into play. So make sure that you heed the advice in this video because hey, look, we're all the same, right? You're just like me. You wanna go out, you wanna work hard, you wanna provide for your family. You pay a lot of money for this equipment. You want it to last for a long time, so you wanna take care of it. So this is how I think that you'll end up breaking your tractor. So let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at these five things. Let's see if we can prevent them so we don't break our tractor, don't break our big investments so that we can keep working for our families, so we can keep uh, taking care of our land, so we can keep you know, providing, things like that. So helping our neighbors, those things are important to all of us, right? Let's take a look at some of these things that I think will help you in taking care of your equipment and not breaking it. So let's start off right off number one off the bat. You've got to read your owner's manual or your operator's manual. This operator's manual will tell you everything you need to know about taking care of your tractor, service intervals, things like that. So if you don't take the time to do that and read the operator's manual, you're going to get in trouble. Inside that owner's manual, they're going to tell you your maintenance schedule. It's going to tell you every time you need to service. It's going to tell you how to remove an implement. It's going to tell you how to uh, check, check for everything. So if you don't take time to read that owner's manual, you got a great, the, the chances of you breaking your tractor increases significantly. So take the time, look over your owner's manual, your operator's manual, use it to familiarize yourself with the equipment and to see what times you need to service it and to see some of the safety precautions you need to take. Super important. And if, like I said earlier in the video, if you're long in the tooth, Sometimes you ain't looked at that operator's manual in a long time. Refresh yourself with it and kind of go through it and say, you know, you know what, I forgot. I needed to do, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever. That's going to help your case. That's going to help your tractor stay working in working conditions for a long time. That's not the only thing, though. There's some more things I can predict how you're going to break your tractor if you don't follow these steps, okay? So let's go on to the next one. The next step is greasing your tractor, especially your loader and the back side of your, your tractor. Now there are some points underneath the tractor that you're gonna need to take a, a look at and hit the grease zerks and the alamites underneath there. But you gotta grease your tractor. You gotta grease it often. Now some people will say, you know, you got to clean out these before you put the grease in them. And I do that. Um, but you've got to put grease in it. Now, how much grease do you put in them? Well, that's simple. You just put the grease, you know, you put your grease gun or your, your, your pistol grip or your hand pump, whatever it is, put that on there. You start pumping grease until the grease comes out. And that's why you always see this dirty grease fittings everywhere. That's why you'll always see the grease coming out of the the pins and bushings of the, uh, of the loader, anything that rotates or, or pivots, you wanna grease them as much as you can. How often do you need to grease them? That's a great question. Where can I find that answer? I can find that answer in my owner's manual. Most owner's manuals will tell you to grease it about every eight to 10 hours. And that's a good rule of thumb. Me personally, I try to grease it every single time I use the tractor. So every day I get out here, I pump a pump, pump or two into uh, you know some grease. What kind of grease should I use? Well, to be honest with you, if you're keeping it greased as much as I do, it doesn't matter what kind of grease you use. Now, some people will argue, you know, for the red and tacky. Some people will argue for you know the heat heat qualifications of the of the grease. I don't really care about that because I'm pushing all that old stuff out so fast. It doesn't have a chance to break down its characteristics and its uh, and its uh, uh, ingredients, I guess you would say, of the grease. So if you're greasing it all the time, it doesn't matter what kind of grease you're using. Just use grease. Use it often. At least eight to ten hours of use. Now that you've got your tractor greased, at a minimum, before you crank your tractor in the morning, you've got to check your oil. That's the most important liquid inside that engine right so you've got your coolant you got your oil you got your hydraulic fluids 
So you need to check your oil every time you get on that tractor. So just keep you, you know, roll of, roll of, what you could do is you could take this, and I used to, my dad used to do this when we were growing up, when we had this old, I think it was a Galaxy, a Ford Galaxy we had, but he would take his uh, paper towel and he would stick it down in, you know, he would just lodge it somewhere, wedge it somewhere in the engine compartment, and that's what we used to check the oil every time and he needed to check it or whatever. We had it readily available. But you need to check the oil in this thing often. So I go around and I check and I make sure that the dipstick has got the oil to the appropriate level, the appropriate fill level. Some people will take it out and put it in there twice so the oil looks good. Or as I would say, this thing's making oil, right? Because if you start that engine up and it doesn't have oil in it, you're going to be in big trouble. So not only are we checking our motor oil, we're checking our hydraulic fluid as well. Some, some tractors have sight glasses, some have dipsticks, and that is good to go. I actually put a dye in my hydraulic oil, it's a purple dye, so that you can see it on the dipstick a little easier. It's in a little green John Deere bottle. I think it's called John Deere Hydraulic Dye. <laughs> I don't know. I think so. I'll, if I can think about it, I'll try to put a picture up here on the screen. So it's like 12 bucks for like, I don't know, four ounces or something like that. But it treats X amount of gallons of hydraulic fluid. When you're checking your hydraulic fluid, make sure that you check it with the temperature of the oil or the hydraulic fluid. Make sure the temperature is kind of warmish and the implements and all this stuff is down, especially your front end loader. That will uh, give you a more accurate reading of your hydraulic fluid. Keeping it serviced, you know, with your fluid changes, your filter changes, greasing it, uh, reading the owner's manual. Those are things that you can do to not break your tractor, right? But there's some more things that we're going to talk about as well. Let's jump into those. One big thing that you've got to do, especially if you have a new tractor with like 10 hours on it or whatever, is you need to check your lug nuts. Okay, see how I've got the paint stripe? Now you're gonna get some paint marks on your lug nuts, and that's just from the factory. That's just letting you know that the actual lug nut was quality controlled by the person that put it together. But take that paint stripe and move it over to the rim so that it connects. That way you can just do a quick visual and make sure that all your lug nuts are still tight. And uh, mine obviously takes a 7 8 <laughs> socket or lug wrench to get mine tight. And I also do the same on the frame bolts. So take a look at this. Let's see if I can get down in here. At one point, see that line right there? That's where it was at one point. And then as I looked at my visual inspection, then I make my new mark after I tightened it up and that's how much I tightened it. So, you know, a quarter of a turn or so, eighth of a turn. So that's super important for you to check your lug nuts and your frame bolts and all that good stuff because that's big time. You know, people neglect that and then they get tires that fall off and rims and wheels that fall off and then blame the manufacturer for it when the manufacturer tells you in the operator's manual to check them at least after the first 10 hours. It's super important. I check mine probably, and I don't know, just when I remember, but it's probably every 50 hours or so, maybe. Yeah, I would think so, about every 50 hours, but I do a visual inspection every time I get on the tractor. I just kind of walk around, make sure I don't have stuff, you know, sticking in and out of the tractor or whatever. I can take a quick look at my lug nuts there, my frame bolts, all that good stuff, make sure nothing's underneath it, no visual leaks or cracks. Now, if you have an air-conditioned cab, this is something that will freak you out too. If you have an air-conditioned cab, see those two hoses right there? That's some condensation stuff, or that's some air-conditioning stuff. So the first time you turn your air-conditioner on, and you park your tractor, and you get off of it, and there's water under it, you go, oh no, I got an oil leak or something. It's not, it's water coming from your air-conditioner, especially down here in the Florida heat. So again, you gotta make sure that you've got to read your owner's manual, keep it greased, keep the fluids levels checked, and there's a couple more things that you gotta do. Your, your lugs, your, your bolts and nuts and all that good stuff, you gotta keep those checked as well. But there's another thing that's kind of not like service related, it's like operation related. So let's talk about that just for a second. <laughs> that threw me out of the operator. 
driver's seat. Don't treat your tractor like a bulldozer. It is crazy how many people complain about their front end loaders bending or getting uh, cylinder rods bent, cylinder pistons bent, rams bent. And they're saying, I don't understand. I just tried to push over a 14,000 pound oak tree. It's crazy how many people think about their tractor as a bulldozer. Don't treat your tractor like a bulldozer. If you treat your tractor like a bulldozer, it's going to break something, right? Yes, you can push things. Yes, it has breakout force. Yes, you can lift heavy things with it, but it is not a bulldozer. And as soon as you think that your tractor is a bulldozer, that's when you start messing up those daggum hydraulic cylinders, man. I'm telling you, and it's a nightmare. And then again, people blame the, the manufacturer. I can't believe that I went over there and I tried to push this oak tree down and it bent my, my, my cylinders, my hydraulic cylinders. That oak tree survived storms and hurricanes and tornadoes and rocks and kids with hatchets. <laughs> and you're going to get out there and you're going to try to push it over with a 3,000 pound tractor, you know? I mean, I'm not a scientist. I don't know physics, but I do know that immovable objects are hard to move with a, with a compact tractor. <laughs> you got to use bulldozers for bulldozer work, you know? So think about that when you're using it. Yes, you can push a lot of heavy stuff over. Yes, you can lift a lot of weight. And that's what these things are designed to use for. But go slow, use caution, kind of look at the, the task that you're going to do and kind of think about, okay, what angle of attack should I use? How can I push it to maximize my, my effort, you know, the, maximize the force of the tractor to push the object over or to pull the object out? or to lift the object up. And so think about those things, kind of what we say in the military is we kind of mission plan it. We'll kind of, you know, kind of think about all the pros and cons, the what ifs, and then, then make your assessment, go out there and get your job done that the tractor is indeed designed to get done for you. So don't exceed the capabilities of the tractor. Uh, you know, a lot of guys will go out there and they'll They'll, they'll do a lot of hard work for them. I've seen videos and I've done videos of this tractor doing some amazing things. And I think that if you treat it right, you keep it serviced, read the owner's manual, do all these things that we talked about in the video, that you'll be able to maintain your tractor for a long time. You're going to get many, many years of use out of it. And, uh, you know, I get a kick out of some of these big ad guys that be like, well, come back when it's got 5,000 hours on it. And, uh, you, you know, listen, the guys that buy these tractors, probably will never see 5,000, you know, the, the people that see 5,000 hours on these tractors are very few and far between. Heck, I didn't even own a tractor until I was 48 years old, you know, and I uh, talked to a guy last weekend, he was 62 years old when he bought his first tractor, and he had it for a month, and he had nine and a half hours on it. So, I mean, so these things are designed to work for you, but you're not going to see a lot of people putting 5,000 hours on them, 10,000 hours on them, because they're just not it's, not, it's not apples to apples. So, you know, it's not a it's it's not an eight thousand you know eight eight thousand series John Deere you know what I'm saying anyway so just do think about some of the things that we talked about in the video and I think that you'll have much success with your compact tractor or your subcompact tractor all the principles are the same so it doesn't matter what you have just uh, treat it the way it's supposed to be treated operate it the way it's supposed to be operated don't be scared of it don't don't be scared of it at all use it and uh, it'll it'll do good work for you so anyway take care watch this video right here it's pretty awesome